Okay, Bush. So in the last class, we had an introduction on modeling and we started with hydrobut. We have to start with hydrobut view. And um, <clears throat> we had an introduction about what is hydrobut view and how it works out. See, having repeatedly said, you still people logging in with waiting for name. Yeah. Please do log in with your name or email ID. After five minutes, I won't disconnect if not, yeah, if you're not changing it. Just select your prop on the name and then click on this edit your name and email ID. Okay. Hello, sir. Uh, recording is on? Yeah, recording is on. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so as we understood as part of modeling, first we replicate the tables from different source systems into HANA. At top of those tables, you go about creating the virtualization models, which will be your attribute view, your analytical view, or calculation view. Okay? Now, so before we start creating these models, uh, we are going to use these tables for creating the models. I have a schema called SAP underscore HANA underscore demo and I've got some tables maintained here. So if you look at, now let's try to understand these tables. What do these tables have then? So I've got a table called address and if I look at the definition of this. So it's got columns like address ID so based on the address ID, you know, city, country, building, region, and validity also from this. From which date to which date, this address is valid for this, which values is. So from this given table, addresses, based on the given address ID, I can find out the city, country, and region. If you look at the content of this table. This is how it looks. Um, you have address ID, then city, then I've got some country and we've got some regions. And also have the validity from which date to which date this address is valid. So this is the table addresses. And I have a table called business partner. So when I say business partner, this could hold me for a customer or a supplier, anything it is. <clears throat> So this table basically has got partner ID as a key and it's got a uh, name of the partner and then in which currency does he deal with and some general information about email ID, phone number, all this. Now from this partner ID, I get to see this address ID. So if I need to know the city or a region or a country about a partner, so from the partner's table, from the business partner table, I need to pick up the address ID and move on to address table to get the relevant city or country or region. So if I just go to this uh, table, so I've got partner ID and I've got role of the partner which is not relevant for us not to worry. So this basically tells you whether it is a supplier or a customer and I've got name of the company. So the, see I get to see the address ID. Now 100 so and so 34 is my customer address ID. If I go to the address table, that gives me city or region. Yeah. That's my business partner table. And I also have another table about product. Yeah. <coughs> if you look at this product. So we have the product ID is a key and then it's got some product type and product category. Then I've got price of the product, width and depth and height of the product. And then I've got something when it comes to product name, I've got name ID and description ID. So what they've done is if you go to this table for each of the product, <coughs> when it gets, comes to the, I've got product type or code. Now look at this. I've got a type as PR, but I really don't know what is this PR. This is like a key. And there's another table where they've given me the descriptions. There's a table called text. Okay. 
okay if i <clears throat> there is a table called constants now if i go to the constants here they have specified what is pr see if it is when i say pr it's it's a product and when you see it as ed see this there is a domain which says pr type product type and then for this product type if you go to pr in for english it is product and for and again they have also have description maintained in german also so from this table when i filter out for product type as my domain i get to see the descriptions for the product type which is maintained in two languages one is german and one is in english yeah and the category is straightforward and then again i have got something called name id and description forget about description i have got name id first so i don't have product name straight away in this table so this is maintain id and and then there is another table called uh, text here when i open this text table this gives me uh, for a product like one i've got something like name id here like this it gives me uh, the name id okay for the given name id i can go to this table and based on the language i get to see the description which is nothing but a product name same way for description of product description also they just given some id as to when i go to the same text table uh, based on the two i get to see the description of the product descriptions <coughs> yeah so these are the tables which we'll be leveraging it and uh, work on attribute views we'll get to other tables later when we deal with calculation views okay <coughs> So I'm going to use this package, which is already created. Now under this, I would like to create a sub package as models, likely. I told you it separates the hierarchy of the package with a dot. So cubex 10 pk dot models is the hierarchy of the package. What models? Now within this models package, I would like to create the views. First. Now first, we're trying to focus on attribute views. As I was telling you, see, any view, whether it is attribute view or analytical view or calculation, it's about manipulating or massaging the tables and projecting the required columns, what is required by the business. Now, first, and when it comes to attribute view, so when you're doing this, all this kind of massaging and presenting the columns, which represents a certain entity, which represents a certain master data entity, then we would go with attribute views for now yeah after understanding all the views then we'll decide when to go for what which views so basically we are trying to build an attribute view uh, for now i would like to build an attribute view first one is for business part So basically, I would like to build a view for business partner, which gets the information about this entity uh, with these required columns. I would like to get the partner ID, and then I would like to get his name, and then say a region, then country, then city, something like this. So this is what I would like to build a view, which can just give me this information. But when I, when we understand, see, for modeling, you have to really understand the data. Okay? But as per my understanding of the data, the partner ID and name are stored in uh, one table, <coughs> which is business partner table. And this region and country and city are stored in a different table, addresses. And do we have a common column? See, the common column need not be a primary key, but we have a common column on address ID through which we can join both the tables and get the information, right? So the logic would be about, now what is the kind of massaging I need to do or slicing and dicing I need to do? I need to consider the business partner table. 
I need to consider the address table and join these tables and get the required columns from both of this and then get it project. That's it. Simple. So now I get in. How do I create this? Now right click on this mod uh, package. Say new. Say attribute. Z. I'm trying to give the naming as Z. A T B P. Okay. This is the name and this is the label. You can give any by default it takes it. And this is the name of the package under which we are creating this view. And this is the type of view what you want. Attribute, analytical or calculation. I am okay with attribute view. And if I need I can use this copy from if I need to copy the definition from say, any other view which is already available. I don't want this. And then within attribute view, we have three types, right? Standard, time, and derived. So I'm going with standard. Let's say finish. So once you specify all the header details of the view, you get to the screen where you can basically um, create the view with all the details. So when you get him, you would see something. You would see something with scenario block here and details block. And depending on what you select, the details block will change. For example, if I select data foundation, you get to see a different canvas. If you select semantics, you get to see a different canvas. Okay. Now, see, so you see data foundation, cement. There's nothing to mug up here. Just be logical, first. Okay. Nothing to remember on the steps wise. If you keep be logical, then nothing like it. Okay. You'll never forget. So it's about now. Now you see first as data foundation. As part of data foundation, you basically specify what are the different tables I would like to leverage in building up this view. You want to build an attribute view, which is a virtualization model. And virtual model is already always built on top of a column store tables. Now, which column store tables would I need to build this view? Okay, so that's what you specify in the foundation. You can either click on this and say add objects, or in the canvas in the data foundation, you can right click and say add. I want to go with that SAP. This is my table name, complete. So this is the tables. Uh, I wanted business partner, then I want address. So I can just select the tables what you want. So the tables have come in. I can just collapse this. Collapse this. So now these are the tables now, both of this. So as part of data foundation, I've just brought in the tables to be leveraged in building up this view. Now when there are multiple tables, I need to relate those tables. Now when I, I need to join those tables. Okay, you establish a condition on the tables or the relation on the tables with the help of joins. Now look at this. In this table, for each address ID, I get the details. And in this table, for a partner ID, I would know the address ID. So, now I would like to join this address ID to this address ID and then I can get the details from. So, from this table, I know address ID. To get the details of this address ID, I need to join. Just drag and drop. That's it. Now, when you drag and drop, you have, you can this, look at this. When you select this join here, it tells you what type of join I'm using. What is my left table? You click this. Uh, what is my right table? And what is the type of join I'm using? So, by default, it is taking as a referential join. We'll come back to the topic on all the join types later. Okay. Or you can also not only drag and drop, you can also select. You can join two columns also. So right click and you can say instead of drag and drop, you can say create join. Uh, choose the left table as the main uh, parent table, business partner. From business partner, I would like to join to the address table to get the details. So select address ID, select address ID, or you can drag and drop this also. Here. And here you can choose what type of join you want, referential, inner, left outer, right outer, text join. I know text join is some, text join and referential join are new. 
I'll get back. I'll come back again. Now just for now. So if I go with inner join, what happens? It only picks up the patterns for which there is address maintained. But my requirement would be like even though for a partner, even the partner does not have address details, but the partner should be shown up. So can I go in that case with left order so that irrespective of whether my business partner has got the address ID, address information, I still project that partner. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And you see the properties window and the columns. And from these tables, what all columns you would want, you just keep selecting. So it forms those columns, partner ID and and I just want company name from this and the currency what he deals with. And then I want to get the city and then I want to get region and country. Just select the columns what you want. That's it. And after you select the columns, you can still customize these column names. For example, it shows us partner ID. My main focus is on, let's say, customers. So I can just rename it also. In the data foundation here, I can rename it as customer ID. I want the label name also as customer. And it says company name is fine if you're okay. Currency is fine. City, region, and I'm okay with these namings. Yeah. It clearly tells me this column is referred from which table it is also. Yeah. Um, let's say something. Uh, I'm not happy with the just the columns what I've selected from the table. I also want to derive a new column. So calculated attributables. Because in attribute view, we cannot have measures. So right click on the calculate columns and say new. Okay, you want, I would like to calculate some new column. Uh, something like, um, um, what, what can we do? For example, say I have a country. I just want to say, customer name something where care and say 20 and I can just say I'm just choosing something string in single quotes I can use this functions uh, Okay, I'm just concatenating these two strings, Mr. to the company name, that's it. Like, I can say this is my um, company name with the initial. Something. Like this, you can derive, you can derive your own calculate columns. Okay. And then uh, once you select the columns what you want and then not available, you can derive new columns. Then you get to the semantics. As part of semantics, you just provide, provide more meaning towards the column. Um, for custom, Out of these columns, I would like to derive this as my key column, customer ID. And for customer ID, I would like to set the company name as a label because customer ID would be the key. My business understands with the label as a text, so I want my company name as a label. I can set the company name as a label. Now, our company name with initials, no, okay. I would like to hide this company name, not required. I was just using this company name only to calculation, but not required, so I'm just hiding it out. Now, currency, I would like to indicate that this column is holding currency codes. So what I can do, I can just declare more semantics on this column, so declaring it as unit characteristics. Click on this, 
semantic type, this is going to be holding currency code. So it will treat that as unit characteristic. Then city region is all fine. Okay, done. Then you can customize the properties if required. We'll get to that. See, by default, the data category of the attribute is dimension. And that's where you're not allowed to have measures. You can have measure, but it has to be treated as attribute only. And we can still create hierarchies if required. And if I say create hierarchies, I would like to go with level based. I would like to go with level based or parent child. Now, I would like to go with country, region, all this, where the values of this column are always at one level. So I will go with level based. And I would like to go level, I'm going with level based hierarchy and then you can just keep adding the levels. I want uh, region first, then I want country, then I want city, then I want the company customer, right? that's it. And then we'll see this properties later. Okay, that's it about creating hierarchies and then active terms. This is about creating your attribute view here. Yeah? If we join two fields from each table, nothing will happen. We can join. Yeah. Our name and label different. Why two things for same purpose? Label is description. Name is a key. Okay. Can we perform currency conversion at attribute level? No. Because when there is no measure, there is no point in currency conversion. Yes, key attribute must in attribute be. In the older version it is mandatory, but in the new version it is not mandatory. If holding it will improve performance. Okay, boss. So, and one more thing, let's say, I want to say matter good view. If I, and I can see the content from your data preview, it will basically show me the data. You can see the raw data or you can also do analysis. This is for you, not for the users. This is for you. Yeah. Customer name, how many customers I have with this region. So region wise, number of customers, I can see chart, table, whatever it is. This for your analysis of testing to view. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. But if I see the content, it is showing me data for all uh, the all the regions, EMEA, Asia Pacific, all those. But my, I'm interested to see only customers from Europe, EMEA, Middle East. So what I'll do is I would like to apply the filtering now. Mm. So while reading from table itself, I would like to get the filter. So just get to the data foundation, select the region, it's a right click and say apply filter. It's equal to or in list or not between contains pattern. You can use any of this criteria. So values EMEA. So it just shows only for EMEA. And then activate. Okay. Then get into data preview. Then I get to see this is how you get into analysis. You just click on this data preview. You can see the raw data. You can see uh, dis distinct values get analysis mm -hmm. and from here also you can see the table preview you can say show data preview of each of the table if you want to understand the data of the table you can just preview the table from there also but this is not correct, so it is just showing all, but for the region it is showing. 
that might be something to do with hierarchies. Filter is always applied in data foundation only. This is wrong. wrong. EM, yeah, then what else? Yeah, it's because of left order. So you get only EMEA. Okay, next, like, like this you can also apply filtering also. Then I would like to go with some product. an attribute view standard yeah. so this time I would like to use the tables on the product so this gives me product ID type and category of this but from here if I look at the table preview Product type is just giving you the key of it, right? AD and PR. PR says product and AD says advertisement. But I would like to get the descriptions of those. So there's a different table which was giving that, right? So let me just add that table. That was constants. Now if I, from this, this constant has got a lot of entries here, yeah? lot of data. So it's got something on domain and it's got some fixed values. I'm interested with only these two, with this domain type as PR type and the product. So what I'll do, I can apply filter on this table so that it fetches, it improves performance also, so always. Yeah? Just say apply filter. I just take only for the product type. So what happens? It only reads data from this table for the domain as product type for the users. So from here I'm just taking only the product type. Okay. Then that is fine. So I can join these two from the product type, I join to fixed value so that I can get the description. I'm leaving the default joins, we'll come to that later. Okay, then the next is the name ID. Again, the name, here I'll prefer, look, see, if you look at this table, I'm joining to this uh, domain table which is giving me the descriptions which are made in multiple languages like text table. So whenever you go joining a table which is giving you multiple descriptions, if I just go with normal inner or reference hill, it will create multiple combinations because if you look at this, for one PR type, for one PR type you see data in multiple languages. You see there are four AD, AD. So when I go with inner journey, it is going to create multiple combinations. So to restrict, so what I want is apart from joining the data based on the fixed value, I also want to filter it based on the login language. If user logs in as English language, 
then automatically this table should be filtered for English and then show me only those. If he logs in with German, it has show me only for German descriptions. So when I want, so when I want to join this table and filter accordingly based on the login language also, and that's where when you want to join a text with multiple description in multiple languages, you go with text join. So you will also specify which is the language column from this. So the column which holds language is this. So what happens internally now? So join says uh, table one dot product type is equal to table two dot fixed value and language on t two dot language t two dot language is equal to the login language. Dynamically that filters out automatically for that language. Same way for I get the name ID and the name of the product name is again stored in a different table again. So which is your uh, text. So this is your text table. Again, I would like to join this product name with this text ID to get the uh, exact name of the product. Let's say create join. Product master table joining to the text table based on the name ID to this text ID. But this can give in multiple languages, right? So I'll go with what? Uh, since I'm joining to a table which holds description in multiple languages, I'll go with text join. In the language columns, language, either way you can choose. Okay, done. And then I say same way, I also have the description ID. See, this also has the descriptions in the same table. So I can't join the same table to multiple table like this. So what I'll do, I'll have to, I need the same table again. So, so when you try to insert the same table again, it automatically gives an alias name for the table. Okay. When I reuse the same table, we can use the same table multiple times into, more, into the same view. So what I will look at is, as soon as I take this table, the, the name of this table is like this, you will see the properties. And why it does not change. Okay. Now when I select this table, it says alias name is blank. But when I choose this table, it says alias name is SAP1. You can rename this alias name if required. So when, the, when you can use same table multiple times into the foundation, when you do that, it basically is going to create multiple uh, alias names for it. And that's it. Now I'm going to join this table again. Create join. To the alias table. Join it on the description ID to this text ID. To the text ID based on the text join. And the language column is this. So that it does fit based on the language column. Then start selecting what you want. I want product ID. Then type code I don't want from here. I want to get the type code description. I'll say product type. And then category I can pick from this itself. The name ID not from here, so I would like to pick the name this text column as a name. So I'll rename this as product name. Okay. And this will be your product description. Okay. 
and then I also wanted to have some product price I can take in then but now question is we cannot use measures right I can see now this price is not referred as a measure it is just referred as normal attribute only it's possible Yeah, text join is simple. Uh, whenever, see normally, let's say, you have a table which is holding descriptions in multiple languages. Say, for example, in the in the main table, I have a key as PR. In the text table, I have got descriptions of this PR in, let's say, five languages. If I do join with normal join, inner join or something, it will create five combinations. Means, PR1 is joined with PR of every language. It, it creates multiple combinations. I don't want that. What I want is I would like to join this PR to PR. And before the join, I would I want the data to be filtered based on certain login language. So whenever I log into HANA, it will be for certain languages. So based on the login language, the data must be filtered out and then apply, apply the join. So that the join will give only one combination. Just even though I've got language uh, description in five languages, based on the login language, first it does the filtering of the record. Then that record will be used for joining. That is what text join is. Okay. And that's it. And then uh, I want this just key. Then I'm okay. I found how you can hide some columns. Same way, view property says dimension. We cannot use measures. And then if you want, you can create your hierarchies also. And the type, category, all those. I'll go with product type, product category. But even this is a level based because values of each column cannot move across per se. Done. Activate this view. We, we have not applied. As soon as I say text join, <coughs> it is implicitly understood about filtering on login language. Yeah? That is what text join does. Yeah. Now, one more point to be noted is I have created two attribute views. <coughs> These are your design time objects. Will it have runtime objects in sysbig schema? Which will be your column views. Suppose. Text join is must in every case wherever we are connecting to descriptions. Descriptions or what you call it as text which are maintained in multiple languages. Okay. So if you go to this big and then I should have a column views relevant to this. This will be runtime objects, which are the column views. Why cube extends here? Yeah, minus cube extend, not CV. Cube extend PK dot. Ten with a low bit. Cubix ten. See now you see this column views created. Yeah, I can also see data from this column views also. Right click and show. Yeah, I can open this column views and see a data preview also. Either way, see.
can we write an expression when we are creating a joint leg yeah. means uh, you can derive the column and then build in but we can do anything when it comes to calculation with scripting but if you want to create an expression explicitly manually you want to create the join expression not possible directly now you have to basically create your own uh, derived column with that expression calculate column then use that calculate column into the join this why is it creating more than one column one is for hierarchy and one is for the normal view here yeah. in case we have standard hierarchy coming from ECC then will it be available in attribute view hierarchy properties no because when you replicate from uh, ECC you just go replicate flat data which will be tables those will not come in you have to recreate that hierarchies again okay Can we use special character for column names or spaces in between? Space is allowed, but not you cannot start with the special characters. And hash is not allowed. Space in between is allowed. Okay, was yeah. Next, I would let create. Um, I would let create one derived view. Dynamic join will get into calculation. We see that later. <clears throat> hierarchy is mandatory to maintain. No. If you want any hierarchical representation, then you maintain hierarchy. But hierarchy is not mandatory. Was not mandatory. I'm just showing you that how to create. Okay, next I wanted to create, show you on uh, derived view so that you get a feeling. So, so create new, add a good view. I'll just say subtype is derived. Then it will ask you from which view do you want to derive this? So all the properties of that view is copied onto this. It says clearly you cannot change the label is the only available field which can be edited. Only this description you can change it. The rest all the properties cannot be modified, you just have to act. This is like derived. But I'll come to this joint. See, I'm just walking you through the system. We'll get into details, every property, everything will get it. First, just get the feel of modeling, that's all. Don't worry in don't worry about the joints. I'll get into very detailed words, okay? Let's not kill time now again to going into question. I'll come if I'm not touched, then you can ask me a question. Okay. Give me some time. Now you get this dir yesterday I touched this white derived view we want. Now base attribute, you see now in the properties you can see this is derived from this attribute view. This is the standard first. So you can understand standard and the base attribute view so on so which indicates that this is an attribute view. Yeah. Yesterday I told you when when you use uh, derived attribute view, once attribute view is created, we're going to use this in analytical view. But once the attribute is created, attribute view is created, I can use it in n number of analytical views. But we cannot use the same attribute view multiple times in the same view. So when you get to use the when you want to use the same attribute view multiple times, then you create a derived attribute view and then use it in analytical view. And then uh, next is about time-based uh, attribute view of type time. Yeah? So whenever you want to derive, uh, de derive a view which can project you time dimensional data, then you go with time-based attribute view first. So for a time-based attribute view, very, very important. Uh,
for a time based data would be you don't use any of your tables by default system will use some tables which is already it has got we have some schema called sys underscore bi and uh, basically when you go with time based attribute view there could be two options one is Gregorian which is normal calendar or which will be fiscal fiscal year now what it does is when you go when you go, when you can create time based attribute view either Gregorian calendar or fiscal year calendar if you are going with either of this it does use some tables which is already there in sys bi standard tables for Gregorian it use some table called t underscore m underscore dimension time dimension instead of typing three tables if you go to schema sys bi it will have a table called m underscore m underscore time underscore dimension this is the table it will leverage for creating the view so by default when you try to create attribute view based on uh, type time to project your time data if it is Gregorian calendar year data then it, it automatically leverages this table m underscore time underscore dimension so since it, it is leveraging this table so I have some data assume there is no data in this table I am deleting all the data in it assume there is no data in this table so there is no data here okay so I can basically generate my data into this table uh, now get the view quick view this is a quick launch and I'll go to L quick view then you go to frequently performed operations as a quick link yeah. so then from here there's option called generate time data just click on this option in the system so you want to generate time data based on Gregorian or fiscal year. I'm going with Gregorian now first. From year 2002 to let's say 2004. For two years I would like to generate my time data. And the granularity is year wise or day wise. Now each entry in the table I would, I would like to have day representing date. For each day it tells me year, month, quarter, week. So I want the granularity is day level. Say finish. Now done. System has generated the time data again. Now if you see this table, if you see the content, it shows the data. So by using generate time data, you can generate the time data here. Now it says, now it represents each record is one day. Jan 1st, 2002, Jan 2nd, Jan 3rd, Jan 4th. Each record of this table represents a day because granular is day level. Like this, you can generate time data for this table, which is Gregorian based. Now let this create a view on it. Can right click on the package and say new okay so I'm going to say it has time based attribute view calendar type is Gregorian and I want granular TS date and say auto create you don't have to do anything see so it automatically creates a view uh, by considering a table from which one sys underscore bi underscore m underscore time underscore dimension since it is going to leverage this table I fill the data into this table already and not only select this column then view properties everything is ready then look at this here here in the properties it says subtype as time yeah and it is also created in a hierarchy also in the year wise month wise time all this also you just have to activate and start So if you get into this uh, date and these values, you can see the information, year, month, date, all this. This is the time-based attribute view. Same way, you can also generate time-based uh, attribute view for fiscal year also. But when you when you got to use, when you got to create a time-based attribute view based on fiscal year, then it leverage a different table called M underscore fiscal underscore calendar. M underscore fiscal underscore calendar. Now basically fiscal calendar will hold data 
based on your financial year okay <clears throat> so when you whenever you say financial year it has to maintain uh, you have to maintain a fiscal year variant which tells you what is the uh, financial periods or do we have any special periods so uh, let me just delete the data if there's anything now when you, when you go to generating the data look at this info, important point when i go to generate data when i say fiscal year or for different year to some 2005 now immediately will ask you immediately it'll ask you fiscal uh, variant schema means in which schema I can get the information about my fiscal year variants. Let's have one is selected. You drop down this, you select all the way, any of the way, K1, K2, K3, V1, or V3, or whatever it is. So I'm able to get this information about variants, K1, K2, K3, from this schema because if I go to that schema, I already have a table called the T009 T009 and T009B that tells me uh, what are the different uh, variants I've got, what are the periods I've got, what special periods then T009 also gives me information about the variant K1, K2, all this available. Since, okay, since these two tables are available in the schema, when I go to generate data, fiscal you have to specify the schema in which, hmm. so in the, when you say variant schema, you specify the schema name in which the tables T009 and T009B are replicated. So I, I already have this, so before, in the real time before you create this, time based adder good view based on fiscal year, fiscal financial year, you will have to replicate the table uh, T009 and T009B well before you generate time data. So I have this schema which has got this and I would like to go for V3 and then say finish. Now time period is generated. If that is done, if I go to SIST BI, underscore fiscal underscore calendar I have the data generated for this variant V3 and for the date for period it tells me which financial year what is with the current adjustments anything so this is about financial year time data generated now once that is done I can create a time based data good view based on financial year Subtype as time and then calendar type is fiscal. So then this will be about three. It's auto create. It automatically takes in the time m underscore fiscal underscore calendar, which will be used for creating this. Activate. Okay. This is just a walk through on how to create attribute of different types, what all it is. Here. Tomorrow we'll get into more details on each of these options. Can we use copy from here? Yes, we can copy. What is the purpose of direct view? I explained. If you want to create multiple time-based attribute views for other scenarios, do we have to generate data in that case? Yes. Good question. He's saying I have one table m underscore time underscore dimension. I have generated time data. Then everyone, there's another scenario they're building. They want data for new another year. So in those cases, you will build your own custom tables, fill the time data, 
with your scripting and then use those tables in your views. Physical has M stands for mass data. Yeah. So this is MM or FI, FI period, a financial period space. Which source tables are going into use of modeling? If we did not replicate tables. So yeah. That's why yesterday I told you, don't worry about tables being replicated, how I got those tables. Just assume the tables have already been replicated and kept in on a database and you're trying to model the data on those tables. That's it. We'll come to that replication later. Can we also use common tables in attribute view or, or is there any other types that we can use? Only column types. We can only use column types only. Only column store tables. First. Okay. So fine. See, this was just a walkthrough to make you understand how this view has been created. Okay. So tomorrow we'll get into the properties of each of this. View. Try to be good with them and just look at this video and then go, be good with this navigation part. So it will be easy for tomorrow. So I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Similar way how I exported the other tables, I'll export HANA demo also. And then you can import and practice it. Okay. Okay. Thanks.